what are the samples that we identified as being... Circulating tumor DNA has really exploded onto the scene in clinical care. It turns out that when there's a tumor in, in someone's body, there's always some cells within the tumor that are dying, even when we're not treating the patient. And when those cells die, some of their DNA can get released into the blood. That lets us get access to a cancer DNA through a simple blood draw. So when you draw blood, you're able to get some of this cancer DNA, but it's a very tiny amount, and so you need very, very sensitive methods to be able to detect it. It takes a soberingly long time before we know whether something is working, and the idea that we could use DNA to get it that earlier has been quite compelling. That can be very informative, not just for telling whether something is failing, but to help pick what the next therapy should be that might help fix that failure. After a patient receives surgery or radiation to try to cure their cancer, we think we can use these tests to identify patients who are likely cured versus those patients who still have microscopic cancer cells. And if we can do that, then the patients who we think are cured might be able to skip the chemotherapy that's often given after surgery or radiation. Whereas patients where we have evidence there are still cancer cells in the body, those patients would be ideal candidates for more aggressive treatment. And then lastly, the potentially most far-reaching application would be using circulating tumor DNA tests for early cancer detection or cancer screening. One could envision trying to use these uh, blood tests that look for mutant DNA to identify cancers really early before they've spread when there's still a high chance for curing them.